I saw an interesting article this week um, written by Alexandra Shulman, who was the past um, chief editor of uh, British Vogue. And I thought it was interesting because she was saying that she wondered whether we as women were doing ourselves favours by keep talking about menopause, particularly talking about having foggy heads, being kind of irrational, bad tempered, and whether that was actually playing in our favour. And it was an interesting comment she made, which was, you know, should we stop talking about menopause? And so I made me think, and I thought, well, for me, I've had, you know, I didn't, I was lucky and didn't have, um, terrible symptoms with menopause and actually she was saying the same that she kind of took it in her stride took it as part of her life and yes she had the odd night a sleepless night and you know hot flushes occasionally but it's just an interesting topic isn't it because we've just had menopause week and so question you know should we be really vocal and talking about it as women and part of our narrative or you know yeah is it doing us favors particularly in the corporate world at the moment when more women are being potentially let go so I don't know what you think Debbie what's what's your sense of that <laughs> it's such an interesting topic isn't it and um, because you told me about the article and then my first thing was oh shit <laughs> it's kind of um that because I don't think I naturally do like speaking about the menopause but I think that goes back to my history of being an Irish Catholic <laughs> and my mother and how she brought up brought me up that anything like this was completely taboo and you just all got hidden away. Mm. So I think I've naturally not wanted to speak about it. And secondly, I haven't personally had a bad menopause. So I think that's another um, issue that I can imagine. I, I think we have to be a bit careful of thinking actually because I'm fine, then everybody's fine. Um, and I was speaking to you earlier about, um, it was Carolyn from Women's Radio was saying, that, uh, that actually she had children later in life and in her menopause years, she is absolutely right center in the middle of the family. And so she is really experiencing, you know, some of the difficulties of um, uh, hot sweats and being a little bit more tired, a bit more grumpy. And she finds, she felt if she was on her own and not having to, you know, deal with the family and all that comes with that, then she'd probably be fine but that life stages is really important of, um, of you know, how, how we as women want to talk about it or don't want to talk about it. Um, mm. So it's a really, um, so I feel really uncomfortable about saying, you know, let's be careful about talking about menopause because, you know, it, and I do genuinely really believe it's a small, for, unless you're suffering really badly, it is a small part of the narrative of midlife and I think the danger is sometimes that we can think midlife women, the whole conversation is around menopause. And, and to me, it definitely isn't. Yeah, and it's kind of like, I suppose for some people, it's like, a, it's like that, almost like a wall, you know, you hit it and you go through it. And for some people, I think that I've had a lot of friends who've really suffered with it, um, both um, you know, overall health, sleep. Um, diet really struggle with digestions you know a lot of my friends just stop drinking when they hit menopause because they yeah. can't process alcohol it's not obviously not a bad thing for us but <laughs> not so much fun um you know yeah. but, but i think it is and and i think there's a piece with that that is about confidence as well mm -hmm. um, i know i felt a little bit of definitely felt that and still feel that i think but i don't know if that's about menopause or just age yeah which is, um i think there's a whole piece for me as a woman that says well, pre-menopause, there's a, a kind of a rationale for procreation as a rationale for having a sexual energy. And yeah. I think as a woman, it's really interesting whether that then is still there and why is it there? And it feels like a different reason for being there then. And yeah. Sexuality is also very um, powerfully integrated with the idea of menopause and what we experience from that and the emotional feelings that come out of that. So I think yeah. there's a kind of there's a physical piece absolutely, and there's definitely a psychological, emotional piece. Yeah. You know, and 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 showing up in work and those sort of things where you're trying to combat hard, you know, probably really tough environment at work anyway, and then you've got these other things that are going on at the moment. Am I going to feel hot in a meeting? <clears throat> you know, am I overreacting to something and then you know chastising yourself for it? So there's a lot I think that goes on with that. Um, so I think I agree. I mean, it's, you know, we were both perhaps very lucky that we didn't have, you know, really bad symptoms. 
Um, but I definitely think that there is a question mark. I think it was Dame Shirley, wasn't it, that said to you about this idea of, you know, corporates uh, and, and whether, as you said, they should be looking at more. So I, I, I wonder whether there is more support uh, in that environment, more acceptance yeah. and, and, and more support around that. I'm not sure. Because it's interesting because when we knew we were going to do this conversation, I kind of called a couple of people this morning and said, what's your view on it? And one of them was a guy, was a, um, a friend of mine. And I thought he made a great point because he said he'd actually been married twice. Um, and has, so has been through a menopause with two different women and said that he really, really wanted to support the, the woman in his life, his, his wife at that time. Um, but he felt he was he was so clumsy around the whole thing that he so he felt from from men's point bringing men into the conversation generally would make it um, a lot more healthy a lot more kind of healthy for for relationships and I think and I think in in the workplace as well people understanding a little bit more and I think that was Dame Shirley's point wasn't it to say this is a transitional period of life sometimes it's just a short Kind of transition and then people are back on form and um, they just have a little bit of a difficult time um, so I know other people have hugely difficult times and it goes on for ages but I think you know to if we're trying to look after our capital and you know training people up to a certain stage in life and then to think oh we'd better hit a certain age and then they're you know it's all too difficult so off they go is a bit nuts in this mm -hmm. day and age mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I like, I'm, I'm really so in two minds about this because I think you don't want anything else that's just going to pigeonhole women and think, well, they get to menopause, they're grumpy, they're having hot flushes and it's all just too difficult. But I think that, and I think for younger women as well, a, a more open conversation to say, actually, um, actually the menopause is just a transition. Some people will have it difficult, some people won't. Um, but, you know, there is actually a lot of life afterwards as well that is um and, and there's a lot of positive life afterwards that if you get if you get it right if you get that transition right and maybe you know it's a, the point is that age is all a transition isn't it so yeah. you, know, mm -hmm. you know when you come whether you go through menopause there's other transitions that you go through aren't there yeah, yeah. You know, i mean whether it's connected with weight or managing your weight or your health i know we've both had health things over the last you know 10 years or so yeah. each yeah. of us um, both with things like um, acid reflux and you know the various things that we've we've look, been looking at and that, and it, you know whether that's menopause related or not the reality is we're going to have all of those different transitions aren't yeah. we our body is going to be changing and yeah. we often talk about this idea of wisdom as well and so with the idea of menopause and what it brings there is also huge wisdom to be found, you know, in understanding our bodies more, being in tune with our bodies more. Um, you know, I know yoga and med you know, meditation are hugely important in, in helping some of that, particularly with the breath and just, you know, being able to kind of calm the system down. So I don't know that I feel like maybe there's a way of not seeing it as menopause and then. Yeah. We often talk about pre and post menopause as if that's kind of all it. But yeah. It's, it's like this is a transition for everything. Menopause is, as you say, you know, part of that process, it's a, a, a physical change, um, and then it impacts everything else. But there's lots of things that impact past menopause, aren't there, as well? Gosh, yes, yeah. It's interesting because um, I know we were looking at some kind of, uh, kind of some of the things that have helped us that we can share around the menopause. And I just wanted to share this book. I know we've both got it. Hmm. Seasonal Yoga, and this is Sue Wood, who was one of our rocking yeah. uh, journey women. And Sue, I'd love to talk more um, to Sue on this subject, actually, because she's um, a, a yoga, a master yoga practitioner and a master Tai Chi and Qigong practitioner and talks a lot about this energy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also, she's, um, she's one of the big gurus around seasonal, living in a seasonal way. And I spoke to her this morning about menopause and she said, what people don't realize is actually that um, going through the menopause is seen as the autumn season. So we're kind of just, um, we're letting go of things and we're transitioning and we're just taking some time just to let something happen, let something change. Talks very much about giving it space as well. But that actually post-menopause is linked with the spring season with everything waking up again. 
And I think too, I mean, we, there's Sue's, you can catch her um, interview with us on our Rocking the Journey podcast, but she's 70 years old. In fact, I think she's over 70 now. And I know she won't mind me saying this, but her energy and her zest for life, she is an absolute kind of walking advertisement. Yeah, she's amazing, doesn't she? Her, as you say, most importantly, her energy and her um, yeah. positivity, actually, because that's quite hard to keep. Some people suffer a lot, don't they, from depression? So that ability yeah. to be positive. Yeah, so she speaks a lot in her book and a lot generally about how you need to work on that and how, you know, coming up to perimenopause, which is, I think we, I think they say is officially 45, generally it depends. And of course there are those women who go through um, a premature menopause, which I was just looking at the statistics actually. It's one in every hundred women go through a, a premature menopause before the age of 40. So um, it's not just older women that no. we're talking about, no. um, but saying that how important it is that we all start to really kind of think about our mental health, think about no. our physical health, what we're eating. And I do think that does, does definitely help. It certainly helped me going through those hormonal, hormonal fluctuations, but just taking care of yourself. And if we you know pushing ourselves, you know, Donna talks about that warrior woman, doesn't she, about how Donna, um, Donna Lancaster from the Bridge Retreat, one of our um, Rocking the Journey um, guests, but she talks very much about you know, how we keep driving ourselves. Yeah. And Sue and her seasonal approach talk, says, if we keep doing that, we are going to just burn out. And the importance of, she talks about this idea of Jing, um, mm. it's a Chinese, ancient Chinese idea of how you keep filling yourself up. And I just think it's such a positive way mm. to look at um, hormonal health. How you manage your health. Actually, speaking of the hormone piece, I think that's another whole question, isn't it, around hormones and HRT and bioidentical hormones. And actually, one of um, our upcoming um, podcast ladies, uh, Nat Natasha McCalla, who I interviewed and is just going to be posted next week, um, talks about, um, she's done a, a great book on spices. Mm -hmm. and how natural spices can actually act as a bioidentical hormone, a natural hormone. So fenugreek, cumin, there's a whole bunch of, of, of uh, spices that she talks about that can support the immune system and help balance hormones. So I think that's really interesting. I've, I've um, had bioidentical hormones for some time yeah. uh, and, and looked at the balance of those. It's taken some time, actually. It mm -hmm. can be quite a, 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 a finessing of that to get it really right. Um, you know, I tried a little bit of testosterone and I really didn't react well to that. Other people, I've got a couple of friends who swear by testosterone, yeah. don't live life without it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> drive their whole energy. You have that, don't you? So, yeah. you know, it's so much what works for individuals. It really is, I think, in this. And it, that's the thing about taking care of yourself. I think sometimes people go, oh, I'll get to that later. And, yeah. you know, and then you kind of go through a whole year of being exhausted or not sleeping well. And actually, I think it's really important to, not necessarily if you don't want to take HRT or bioidentical, or, but maybe yeah. even natural pieces yeah. around that. But it's the same with products as well, isn't it? You know, whether you've got skin products that work better for you. I know you and I both use Empel, which is a brilliant yeah. brand. It's such, a, such a brilliant brand. Absolutely. Brilliant brand. Yeah. Um, mm. And they've got a fantastic serum for the face, especially yeah. designed for menopausal women and, and a night cream as well. And they are brilliant. Um, and I know you've used, and I mean, you've used HRT before, Debbie, as well. Yeah, so I went on HRT in my late 40s because I yeah. had, um, and I think um, it is all about, I, I did a lot of research around, you know, my, my own personal risks, um, and osteoporosis is definitely something that's in my family. So I, and also bowel cancer, so I kind of weighed the risks up. And I think it's really important that HRT is not, a, like any medication is not risk-free. Mm. And definitely think, you know, if you look at the research, there is research to say that it does increase the risk of breast cancer. Yeah. So, but I think like everything in life, this is just weighing things up and, and looking at the evidence, you know, trying to understand, you know, how is this going to help me? And, and personally, you know, you're talking about per our own personal risk, understanding our own histories, our own, um, who, who we are and what we need as well. And I mean, I, I, fa I have found HRT to be absolutely fantastic for me. I know other people it didn't work for. Yeah. Um, definitely didn't get on with testosterone. And I know lots of women exactly mm. the same thing. 
Yeah. yeah. So funny. I mean, it gave me spots. So yeah. Him. yeah. Actually, yeah. But no, <laughs> not doing yeah. that. <laughs> and also maybe quite yeah. gingery. So, yeah. yeah. But that, and actually, the one thing. Um, so my advice to anyone wanting HRT is to get yourself to a proper menopause clinic. Mm. Um, and um, I use Nick Panay in, um, mm. who's one of the the most the most well known um, uh, uh, doctors that does uh, menopause properly. Mm. And, um, and the one thing I think is so important is to have your blood taken. So yeah. you know, again, what the, the actual level is. Um, and I'm sure some people are being over-treated and under-treated. So really understanding what your levels are. You know, so yeah, I think that's so true, isn't it? I go to someone called um, a clinic, Dr. Anua Rasu, Anua Rasu, and she actually is the same way she takes, it's not just the hormones, they look at everything and they do regular um, checks on your osteoporosis aspects, you know, uh, bone densities, uh, all the bloods. I think it's just so important when we get to this age, if we can afford it. And the NHS does some brilliant uh, I think they've got an amazing clinic, and Dr. Panny works on the NHS as well as private, doesn't he? So, yeah. He does, yeah, and, and they've made it an actual specialty that yeah. you're studying menopause properly. Yeah. And, um, and so you've got, so we've got the facts, and I think that's what's so important. Yeah. Isn't it? We, we want the, the actual evidence and the facts that is available. Um, yeah. And then, you know, making decisions for, for ourselves, I think. To yeah. Them, to... And there's so much on the internet as well, isn't there? I mean, let's face it. There's so many great programs. I think yeah. Women's Radio does quite a bit on uh, on menopause. I know yeah. there's a few new books out at the moment. Um, the Shift by Sam Baker, I think. And I think Meg Matthews has got one out at the moment on the new hot, which sounds brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great title. Very, very yeah. good for my age title. Um, <laughs> but I think that, you know, I think there's so many yeah. things out there that you can learn from other women that have gone through it. And yes, definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, we're talking about creams before, I think, you know, certain kind of, if we talk about these things, I think what is good is talking about these things, because you know, somebody could be listening to us and thinking, I don't know whether to go on HRT, and I'm, it's not a conversation I want to have with people at work or whatever. Mm. So I think there is a difficulty if we don't talk about these things. And, and you know, th you know um, the one thing I really got through, through menopause is dry skin and, and um, you know, products, using certain products that... Um, are, are, that can help that and I think we can only find out about this if we talk about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I think the point is really well made about um, you know how hard it is for men to um, maybe yeah. talk about the subject particularly with women close to them maybe. Uh, I, that is re really true and and actually you know it's, it's a really good thought about how as you said even you yourself might not want to bring it up let alone if a guy wants to bring it up with his wife or partner or you know so i think that i think it's really a, a good point to think about how do we actually as women make it easier for men to have the conversations and so i think that's a, a really good point actually yeah maybe we should bring him on and have a chat with him yeah <laughs> Talk to him bring men in on the conversation <laughs> actually it would be really interesting to do that yeah. i think we could and they are yeah. that it's part of the support and i think definitely yeah. from you know, when I was definitely from my background, that idea you didn't talk about periods, you didn't talk mm -hmm. about anything about women mm -hmm. and how far we've come mm -hmm. and that. And I think to get rid of that embarrassment around, you know, these natural stages of life uh, yeah. that just happen. And I think the good, a really good thing is we've got a lot of very strong female role models now who are older, who are obviously post menopause, which means they've had a menopause. Yeah. And, you know, Kamala Harris in the, in the US, she's a 57-year-old woman. Mm. Um, obviously, we've got our, our, our lovely Helen, Helen Mirren and yeah. um, people like that, Judy Dench. Uh, but there are more role models out there, I think, for, yeah. for post-menopausal women who are doing fantastic things and showing life. Absolutely. Absolutely. They are, they are living. And so most of them actually, yeah. isn't it? When, they, when they get to, sometimes maybe when they get to 70, they say, I am more energetic. I feel better, you know, about my life. I'm happier in my life now. It's so fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And you have a whole new lease of life. Yes. But I think it's mindset, isn't it? A lot. If we start to write ourselves off at a certain age and say, well, we can't do that. Yeah. Uh, we want to, uh, and uh, going back to Dame Shirley, when we spoke, she was saying about um, that idea of writing your own narrative to yeah. say, actually, I don't get this. I don't get the fact I need to stop working or stop being really kind of right in part of the conversation. 
um, and, and seizing our own narrative to say, actually, I feel great. I want to do lots of things. I've still got loads to say. And she was saying that at 86. So it's... Um, <laughs> amazing, isn't it? Got, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, she's amazing. Right, so I think we need a man on. Yes. Um, I think we need um, a doctor on to talk about HRT, to give the real kind of facts around HRT. Yeah, and maybe we get, because we're doing these um, forums, suggesting these forums where we bring a, a number of women on. So maybe also uh, it would be really great to have two or three or four women who've experienced menopause differently. Yeah. We can share those ideas and also the learnings. I think that, that would be something that we could really support what we're doing on. Yeah, yeah, sounds brilliant. Really great. Thanks for the chat, Debbie. As always, Thank great. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs>